Good morning. It's Thursday morning. I'm glad to be with you t today as we uh, begin our time together in Habakkuk. This is just going to be a few days. Um, you know, Habakkuk is a short book of the Bible. Uh, in my Bible, it's only three pages long, so it kind of shows you how, how short it is. But we're going to spend, um, spend some time the next uh, couple days digging into this uh, wonderful um, this wonderful book of Scripture. It's one of my favorite small prophets in the Old Testament, or minor prophets, as we talked about yesterday. Not to say the minor prophets are less important than the major prophets. They're just literally shorter, you know, just literally two, three pages compared to Isaiah or Ezekiel or Jeremiah, Daniel, things such as that. So anyway, uh, we're going to be reading today Habakkuk chapter 1. We'll be reading chapter 1. We're going to read the whole chapter. It's only 17 verses, but we'll read Habakkuk 1, um, 1 through 17. An oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. So we see right off. Remember I said yesterday that the word of the Lord would fall upon a prophet and they would speak the word that the Lord gave to them. Habakkuk's a little bit different in that this is more a vision that Habakkuk saw. So this is not so much him preaching as it is him recording the visions that the Lord gave him. So it says an oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. So let's see what this oracle was that he sees. So it says, verse 2 says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and will you not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing, and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Look at the nations and see. Be astonished. Be astounded. For our work is being done in your days that you would not believe if you were told. For I'm rousing the Chaldeans, the fierce and impetuous nation, who will march to the breadth of the earth, to seize the dwellings not their own. Dread and fearsome are they. Their justice and dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more menacing than the wolves at dusk. Their horses charge. Their horsemen come for, from far away. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They co all come for violence, with, with faces pressing forward. They gather together like sand. As kings they scoffed, as ru and, in, and rulers they make sport. They laugh at every fortress and heap the earth to take it. They sweep by like the wind. They transgress and become guilty. Their own might is their God. Are you not from old? O Lord, my God, my Holy One, you shall not die. O Lord, you have marked them for judgment, and you, O Rock, have established them for punishment. Your eyes are too pure to behold evil. You cannot look at wrongdoing. Why do you look? On the treacherous and are silent when the wicked swallow those more righteous than they. You have made people like fish of the sea, like crawling things that have no ruler. The enemy brings all of them up with a hook. He drags them out with his net. He gathers them like his in his sign. He rejoices and exalts. Therefore he sacrifices to his net and makes his offering to his sign. By them his portion is lavish and his food is rich. Is he then to keep on emptying his net? Destroying nations without mercy. So you see, I think one of the reasons why I like Habakkuk so much and why I like the Old Testament prophets so much is that so much of what they speak and see are issues and things that we deal with in our modern context. So what are we dealing with Habakkuk? Habakkuk says this, Lord, don't you see what's happening? Why do you make me see the wrongdoing and look at trouble? How long shall I cry for help? Will you not listen? I cry to you violence, and you not save. Lord, do you not see these things? Or it, 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 if your eyes were too pure to behold evil, if you could not look upon wrongdoing, you would have not believe. You would not believe what you would see. Lord, why, why, why is this happening? Why is there evil? And one of the things that I really like about Habakkuk, you see him struggling with the wickedness of the world. You see him struggling. The Chaldeans are the Babylonians. And they are just, uh, that's at this point in, in world history, the Babylonians are just the dominant um, empire and the dominant force. And we see the Babylonians just rolling through and just conquering nation after nation after nation. They come in, they come and they destroy uh, Judah and they haul away the young, um, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, those stories we know so well. They they were taken in the, the Babylonian exile. So Babylon's come in and destroyed the temple, destroyed the people, destroyed everything, and taken away the young into exile. So Babylon's just all powerful. They are, and the Bible's full of powerful empires that are no more. Persia, Babylon, Assyria, Greece, Rome, 
All these powerful empires that the people of God dealt with now are no more, and yet the people of God remain. So I think that should give us hope in the world we live in. We, we always feel like this moment we're in is the worst moment ever in human history. And we see how long the people of God have suffered under evil, struggled, and yet have prevailed and have remained. So what I really like and we, we see, we see here. He says, uh, "There's some beautiful analogies here." He says, uh, ba "Babylon." He says, they're, they're, "Their kings are scoff. They laugh at empty fortresses. They sweep by like the wind. Uh, their 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 might is their god. Uh, their own might is their own god." And then it says here in verse 15 and following, it says they bring up this net. They get, like the image of how, how their destruction is like casting a net in the sea. They they bring up their net. And therefore, he sacrifices to his net. He makes offerings to his saint. In other words, that, that Babylon has this war machine that's just destroying everything. And they worship it because they're so powerful. And the thing I love about Habakkuk, Habakkuk is struggling with these things. You're going to see it throughout this book. He's struggling. And it's going to get to one of my favorite verses when he has a sense of peace here in chapter 2. But he's struggling with these things. And... I like the fact that Habakkuk models for us, or in many ways gives us permission as Christians to ask these hard questions. To ask these hard questions, y'all. If we serve a God who's so weak that we can't have a conversation with him about the things we don't understand, how weak is our God? But when you, when you see all throughout the Old Testament, from Moses talking with God on the mountain to David in the Psalms to these prophets saying, God, I don't understand. Job, I don't understand, God. This doesn't make sense to me. Now, we, we will see the humility that comes from when we encounter God. But I, I love how the prophets remind us and teach us and model for us the truth that as Believers in God, believers in Yahweh, Yahweh's own children, the, the followers of the Father. We can have conversation with God. And we can even bring to God the things that we don't understand. This is a very Jewish concept. You see it all throughout the Old Testament. And it's something that as Christians, I think sometimes we, we forget that we're allowed to bring to God our questions. Bring to God our things we don't understand. God, I don't understand. How long will I cry out violence and you not listen? How long will you not save? Do you feel like that in the world sometimes a day? We see violence across our nation, across our towns, across the street. We say, Lord, how, how long? How long, oh God? And the danger, y'all, I would rather us ask God hard questions and struggle with hard questions, then our heart grow cold to the violence in our, in our time. It's better to have a hard conversation, a mysterious conversation with God in Scripture about the things we don't understand than just saying, well, that's just the way it is. We should never allow our hearts to get hard to the sin in the world. We should never allow our hearts to get hard, let our hearts get hard to the sin in our lives. The prophets never do. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet because he weeps because of the destruction that he sees and the problem he faces. We as Christians should know that we have a God who loves us. And while it may feel like sometimes this world, huh, it's never going to get better. Does God even see? Does God even know? Does God even care? And we're like, Habakkuk, how long will we cry these things out? Are you not from old, oh God, oh my holy one? Your eyes are too pure to behold evil. But why do you look upon the treacherous? Why are you silent when the widows swallow those who have more, more righteous than they are? Why? We're going to see in Habakkuk some answers. We're going to see in Habakkuk some answers. We're going to see God give wisdom to Habakkuk. But I think today's reading gives us permission. When we watch the news or read the paper, or see what's happening and say, God, I don't understand. God, you've got to help me understand. You've got to explain it. Better, God cannot help us with the things we struggle with if we do not give it to him. 
if we keep our questions and our struggles clenched in like a fist, never release them, never give them to him, never ask these things, he can't give us wisdom and grace and mercy and healing. He can only help us with what we give to him. So your struggles, your doubts, your fears, the things you don't understand, give those to him. He can help you with them if you give them to him. But first, we've got to give them to him. So today, whatever questions or struggles you're facing, doubts, worries, fears, give them to Jesus. He understands. He knows what you're thinking anyway. Give them to him. And you'll find peace there. He'll show us some answers. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Have a great day. I hope you're enjoying this next few days in Habakkuk. We'll pick up tomorrow in chapter 2. Thanks for being part of this.